Hi friends. This week at school we've been talking a little bit about farmers and I know you have some farmer activities to do at home. Well today I'm going to tell you a story about someone who is a farmer. She doesn't have animals on her farm though. Her job as a farmer is to grow something. What do you think she grows? If you said apples you were right. Let's sing our hello song and then I'll tell you about apple farmer Anne. Hello everybody, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Hello everybody, how do you do? God loves you today. Apple Farmer Annie is written by a lady named Monica Wellington. And Monica Wellington made the pictures and she wrote the story. So I know that she is a very special person to be able to do both. And she writes stories about different workers and what they do. So this one is Apple Farmer Annie. I have one about a pizza shop and one about someone who has a bakery. And Monica Wellington wrote all of those. So she wrote this one about apples. Annie is an apple farmer. She has a big orchard of apple trees. So do you see all these trees that are together right here? When you see all of those trees together like that, that's called an orchard. So it looks like she's got her house. She's got her house over here and maybe a garage. She doesn't have any animals except for a pet dog. In the fall, Annie picks, picks baskets and baskets of round, ripe apples. If you've ever gone apple picking, you might also pick a basket of apples. She grows many kinds of apples, and she sorts them and organizes them. Oh, it looks like she organized them by color. She has green and yellow, red, ooh, some mixed colored apples. And even this page shows them all sorted out. They each have found their matching apples. Annie uses some of the apples to make some sweet apple cider. You might like apple cider or you might like apple juice. And those things are made from apples. She uses other apples to make applesauce. Well, I can see on her cutting board. It looks like she cut open an apple. She found some seeds. There's the apple skins on the side. Ooh, even inside that apple I could see the little seed pocket. But she doesn't use the seeds or the or the stem and she doesn't use the peels. She uses just the flesh of the apple to make her apple sauce. She loves baking muffins and cakes and pies with her apples. What do you think these are going to be? I think muffins. But Annie saves the most beautiful apples to sell at the farmer's market. She's loading them into her truck. She drives her truck into the city. Now, the city reminds me a little bit of Chicago because it has all of those tall buildings. But guess what? Chicago doesn't have a big bridge like this that goes over the water. It has a bridge that goes over the river. But this bridge is going over the water in the ocean. So this is actually New York City. Annie, the apple farmer, sets up her stand at the farmer's market. Lots of customers come to Annie's stand, and she is busy all day long. By the end of the day, she has sold everything. She packs up her apples, and it's time to go home. Wait a minute. She doesn't pack up her apples. It says she has sold everything. She packs up and goes home. Ooh, it looks like she's packing up all of her bushel baskets. Annie is tired but happy. It feels so good to have her own apple farm. Now, if you had this book at your house, it would give you some ideas for cooking. You could cook applesauce or apple muffins or applesauce cake. So that's the recipe card. It tells you what to put into the mixture to make those different things. I like that. Okay, now 
my apples that I have in my pocket chart here. I have three columns of apples. I have a red column, I have a yellow column, and I have a green column. Behind one of these apples is a star, and the star means that that apple gets the prize. So if I look at my apples, I have number one all the way up to number 12. Look at the 12. A one and a two together. First the one, then the two. If I have a one and a one together, that's 11. A one and a zero is a 10. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Apples for sale, apples for sale, right before our eyes. Which one is the winner? Which one takes? The prize. I think I'm going to pick my favorite number is number seven. Let's see if I'm right and the apple prize is behind the seven. Ooh, it's not. Okay, now I think I might choose four for my friends that are four years old. Let me see if it's behind the four. Ooh, no prize. I might choose three because I have three boys that are doing e-learning. So let me try the number three. R is the prize behind the three. Oh no. Oh, I didn't take any from the yellow column. How about 11, the one and a one? Apple prize? Oh boy. How about number eight? No. How about number six? Oh, I finally found it. I finally found the apple prize. A star for the best apple. I'm going to put my numbers back, but now I need help. I don't know where they're going to go. So first I have number six. Let's see where I need to put the six. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I'll put the six right above the nine. Okay, now I've got another number. What number is that one? Number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, the eight comes right before the nine. All right, ooh, 11. Now, even without counting, look at the yellow column. It's missing one. It's missing this one, the 11. Okay, how about a number three? One, two, three. Easy one. Oh, now I've got two reds left. One, two, three, four. Oh, I've got the four. What's going to go here? It comes before eight. It comes after six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Awesome. Number seven. Ooh, thank you for helping me with those numbers. I'm going to put my pocket chart away, and I want to tell you a story that comes from the Bible. Now, the Bible has two parts. One part is called the Old Testament, and one part of the Bible is called the New Testament. Right at the beginning of the New Testament, that was when Jesus was born. So the stories in the New Testament are the ones that Jesus is in. So this is a story from the New Testament and it's about Jesus, and it's about his friend. Here's his friend. His friend's name is Lazarus. So let me see if I can pull, I'll pull this a little closer so you can see a little better. So Jesus had a friend named Lazarus, and Lazarus had two sisters. Now his sisters both had names that start with M, Mary and Martha. I have two sisters in my family named Mary and Martha. Okay, here's my two sisters. Now if you look at the sister's face, ooh, that sister is very sad. Why do you think the sisters are both sad? Hmm. Well, if I look at Lazarus, it looks like he's in bed. Let me see if that's his bed. Ooh, I see a little pillow. I see a blanket. I see his bed. Okay, let's put him back in there. They are sad. Because their brother Lazarus is very sick. He's so sick 
that medicine won't help him, food will not help him, getting enough sleep doesn't help him. And they're so worried that their brother Lazarus is going to die. So they said, you know what? We need to get Jesus to our house soon. And Jesus can heal Lazarus. So Mary and Martha said to their friend, go find Jesus. And the friend left to go find Jesus. And while the friend was gone, something sad happened. Lazarus died. Now let me show you. Do you see his eyes are open? And then if I turn him over, his eyes are closed. His body didn't work anymore, and he died. Now, Mary and Martha were so, so sad. They didn't want their brother to die. They wanted their brother to be healthy, but his body just didn't work anymore. So they took Lazarus' body, and they wrapped some white cloth around him, and they put him in a cave. So when Jesus was on the earth, they would take bodies and they would put bodies in a cave. Now, if you know anything about Jesus when he died on the cross, they put Jesus' body in a cave that we call a tomb. So they found this cave and this tomb, and that is where they put Lazarus' body. They put a big rock stone in front as the door. Now, while they were doing this, Jesus finally got to Mary and Martha's house. And when Jesus got there, Mary said, Jesus, where were you? When you were gone, our brother Lazarus died. Now Jesus started to cry. So did Mary and Martha because Jesus really loved Lazarus. And Jesus said, can you take me to the spot where you put his body? And Mary and Martha said, sure. So Jesus came over to that cave. And then Jesus did something that was a little strange. Jesus said, let's move that rock away. And he said, Lazarus, wake up. Now Mary and Martha knew that Lazarus was not sleeping. They knew that Lazarus had died. So they didn't know what was going to happen. And then Jesus did it again. Lazarus, wake up. And all of a sudden, out of the cave, came Lazarus. And Lazarus was all better. He was alive. He wasn't sick. He could stand up and walk and talk. And he was so glad to see his friend Jesus. And Mary and Martha said, Jesus, you are amazing. You made our brother come alive again. Praise to Jesus. It's a miracle. Oh, I love that story. I love that Lazarus died and he came back to life again. Well, thanks for spending some time with me today. Let's sing our goodbye song. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, my friends, to you. God bless you everywhere you go in all you say and do. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, my friends, to you. God bless you everywhere you go, in all you say and do. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. We sure miss you.